So, let us look at the Koyappan scheme of classification. So, this particular person tries to classify the world alphabetically on the basis of temperature, precipitation and climatic conditions. So, let us see how exactly he does that. The very first important thing about his classification is with respect to A, C, D and E delineate humid climates, B means dry climate. He says A, C, D and E are humid where rainfall takes place. B means dry climate, B dry means deserts comes into picture or grasslands comes into picture. A, C, D and E are usually rainfall. Either it is snow or it is heavy rainfall in the equator. So, let us see how exactly he divides these capital letters as well. The first important thing A is tropical region means 23 and half degree or till 30 degree north and 30 degree south. Average temperature of the coldest month is 18 degree Celsius or higher. I told you at any point of time in tropical regions, temperature will not be less than 18 degree Celsius. This is what he tries to tell. Second important thing, dry climates. Here what happens? Evaporation exceeds precipitation. Either you have grasslands or you have deserts where Rainfall is less but evaporation is more. Warm temperate, I told you 30 to 45 degree. The average temperature of the coldest month of the climate years is higher than minus 3 degree Celsius but below 18 degree Celsius. What is the meaning? In winters, temperature will be less than 18 degree Celsius or greater than minus 3 degree Celsius. I call this to be warm temperate. I am talking about coldest climate because above 18 degree if it has, it is tropical. If it is less than 18 degree, we call it cool temperate. Then you have D, cold snow forest climate. Snow forest climates. Average temperature of the coldest month is minus 3 degree Celsius or below. Then you have cold climates. Average, see, here what do you usually see? Minus 3 degree Celsius or less. Temperature in the coldest month. 18 degree tropical. 18 to minus 3 warm temperate. Minus 3 and below, we call it cool temperate. But you have summer. Cold climates throughout the year, temperature will be less than 10 degree Celsius. It is cool. Highland. Cold due to elevation. Himalayas on top, if you go, it is very cold. Why? With increasing altitude, temperature decreases. H is with respect to highland. I hope this is clear. Tropical, 18 degree and above. Coldest temperature is 18 degree and above. Warm temperate, 18 to minus 3. Cool temperate, minus 3 and below. Throughout the year, if it is 10 degree Celsius, we call it cold climates. And with elevation, if you see less temperature, you call it high land climate, right? And then we also have to see some of the alphabets. Yeah. With, we also have to see some of the alphabets with small letters. That is, on the basis of dryness, rainfall, we divide it into F, M, W, S. What is the meaning? F means no dry season. Can you recollect equatorial type of climate, low pressure area and you also have marine type of climate where from all sides you get rainfall and you also have the most important aspect that is with respect to coniferous forest, right? I told you there also evergreen rainfall throughout the year because of convergence. No dry season at all. Second important thing, monsoon type of climate meaning you will get rainfall in summer. Whether it is Asia, that is India and Southeast Asia, ASEAN countries or if you are talking about China, they get rainfall usually in summer. So, this is what we say summer monsoon and India does not get rainfall winter. So, we call this. Can I say India is tropical? India is monsoon? And India is having winter dry, 
tropical is usually given by E A M W. Can you see this? Winter dry season. S means summer dry season. The small letters A, B, C and D talks about degree of severity of temperature. High temperature, then you will give a different letter. Is that fine? We will be seeing that. The B dry climates are subdivided. Dry climates are subdivided into grasslands and deserts. S means step P. The meaning of this is grasslands. W means deserts. Is it fine? On the basis of this, now let us start analyzing the regions. First, you have tropical wet. A, F. Capital A, F. No dry season. That means rainfall throughout the year. Tropical monsoon. A, M. Monsoonal short dry season will be there. Tropical wet and dry. You will have rainfall, but winter there will be dry season. AMW for India we combine. Dry climates. First, you have subtropical step P or subtropical, tropical grasslands. B is dry. S is grasslands. And H is hot. H stands for hot deserts. Subtropical grasslands. Correct? Subtropical grasslands which are hot. Can you see this mid latitude step is dry, grasslands, cold, dry grasslands, hot, tropical, dry grasslands, cold, temperate, subtropical deserts, dry, desert, hot, dry, desert, cold. Is that fine? Did we cover this? Now let me go further. Humid subtropical. What is the meaning of this? Humid. C. Warm temperate. 30 to 45. Let me say C. Humid means they get rainfall throughout. But as it is closer to the equator, we call it hot. Mediterranean, warm temperate, dry summer season, CS, marine west climate, warm, climate rainfall throughout, temperature is usually less. Is this fine? No dry season, it is warm and cool summer. Temperature is little bit less. Here it is little bit more. I will show you the places. D means, I have already told you, cool climatic condition minus 3 and below cold temperature. Humid continental, D continental rainfall throughout. I talked about taiga forest, subarctic, winter dry, very severe. So, can I say D, W. Right? Winter dry is W. Summer dry S. Cold climate, tundra, polar ice cap. Highland, highland with snow water. Don't worry. Let's go one after the other. Tropical wet climate, AF. Where do you see 0 to 5 degree north and 5 degree south? Amazon basin in South America. Western Equatorial Africa, islands of East Indus, can you see all this are usually present 0 to 5 degree north and 5 degree south. Significant amount of rainfall occurs in every month of the year, thunder showers in the afternoon 4 o'clock rainfall. The temperature is uniformly high and the annual range of temperature is negligible, that is it will be same throughout the year. The maximum temperature on any day is around 30 degree while the minimum is 20 degree because the breeze will usually bring it down. You have tropical evergreen forest with thick canopy cover, large biodiversity found in this climate. Next chapter, I will be taking up this. Tropical monsoon climate, 
ट्रॉपिकल मॉनसून क्लाइमेट ये यम फाउंड ओवर सब कॉन्टिनेंट नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न पार्ट ऑफ साउथ अमेरिका नॉर्दर्न ऑस्ट्रेलिया एशियान कंट्रीज यूजली यू फाइंड दिस अबाउट दिस वी विल रीड इन इंडिया मच डिटेल बट आई विल बी टेकिंग वन सिग्निफिकेंट सेशन एज बेसिक्स वेर आई विल बी टेकिंग अबाउट इंडियन मॉनसून इन डिटेल एंड जस्ट एक्सप्लेन यू how the wind circulation takes place but when we read we read it in detail there itself tropical wet and dry climates occurs north south of the af type of climate it borders with mediterranean type of climate amazon basin bolivia paraguay in south america sudan and this here we are actually talking about see guys as you move away from the equatorial forests above and below rainfall will be bit less sometimes it will be more sometimes it will be less that is what they are talking about this tropical wet and dry climates above and below you can see different things whenever we talk about dry climates it is characterized by very low rainfall that is not adequate for the growth of plants this climates cover a very large area of the planet extending over large latitudes from 15 to 60 degree north and south of the equator at low latitudes 15 to 30 they occur in the area of subtropical high where subsidence and inversion of temperature do not produce rainfall so according to this what are we seeing subtropical steppe type of climate subtropical desert type of climate this we have already seen so let's see quickly have common precipitation and temperature characteristics located in the transition zone between humid and dry climates that is it is in between humid where extreme rainfall is there and then you have less rainfall subtropical steppe receives slightly more rainfall than the deserts adequate enough for the growth of grasslands the variability in the rainfall affects the life in the steppes much more than the deserts often causing famine in deserts famine doesn't occur but here famine occurs because grasslands and are there few people try to grow certain things where food does not usually available rain occurs in short intense thunderstorms in deserts and is ineffective in building soil moisture rainfall is not enough for the soil to retain the moisture fog is common in coastal deserts bordering cold currents i told you whenever you have on shore winds carrying moisture going fog will be present maximum temperatures in the summer is very high highest is actually recorded at al aziza in libya very very important for us warm temperate mid latitude sea it is subdivided into humid subtropical climate Humid subtropical climate occurs polewards Tropic of Cancer and Capricorn mainly in North Indian plains South China interior plains the rainfall is similar right you have w means dry winter this is very very important it is sum it is hot mediterranean type of climate on the western side i have already shown summer you won't get rainfall winter you get rainfall sub tropical climate lies in the eastern parts of the continents unstable and cause rainfall throughout the year they occur in the eastern side united states of america southern and eastern china southern japan northeastern argentina coastal south africa remember guys if you don't get rainfall india also gets rainfall not only during southwest monsoons but they also get rainfall because of cyclones they also get rainfall because of several reasons monsoons means they get rainfall but most of the rainfall occurs during summer this is what we try to understand similarly when are when we are talking about temperate monsoons they also get rainfall throughout the year but more rainfall is in summer marine west coast climate whenever i talk about this type when winds are blowing like this or winds are blowing like this the western side usually get rainfall marine west coast climate the meaning of this is if i take if westerlies are blowing they give rainfall islands if northeast trade winds are blowing they give rainfall this is what we call marine west coast climate then 
you have cold snow forest type of climate we are talking about 45 to 60 humid winters that is they get rainfall usually during winters cold climate with dry winters one is cold climate with humid winters throughout the year they get rainfall here they won't get rainfall in winters this is what we see then you have polar climates tundra climate and ice caps are present and whenever we talk about highland climates with increasing height you get different climatic conditions is that fine i want you to remember the names capital a m w a f this needs to be known this is enough for india also they have given this classification we have to remember that as well i hope this is clear let me talk about the next important aspect that is climate change the information given here is very general where they say that how with the emission of carbon dioxide ashes and other particles into the atmosphere how exactly the greenhouse gas has started initially there was ice age now the world is warm mainly because of this so carbon dioxide initially helped to warm the earth but today what is happening with increasing temperature we are under great trouble this is what we try to see causes of climate change over a period of time we usually say that there will be ice there will be hot climate that is water age will be there ice age will be there whenever ice age is there it will be extremely cool whenever water age will be there it will be extremely hot some people say there is nothing called as hot age or cool age the only thing what we see is whenever these plates move towards poles usually they will be much cooler if the plates are moving towards equator they will be warmer so global warming is usually taking place today mainly because there is excess of pollution and emission of carbon dioxide and we do not have carbon sinks that is whichever absorbs this carbon dioxide is reducing for ozone depletion we have montreal protocol for carbon dioxide you have kyoto protocol right and all this you will read in detail here whatever they have given is very less no need to see much right so climate change is increasing because of increasing amount of greenhouse gases you need not worry much about this i hope guys it's clear for you we saw the classification and all now let me take some of the definitions which are given in this book that is with respect to biogeography basics 1 and 2 that i'll be covering but remember when i take up actual ncert books from 6th to 12th apart from this particular ncert book there we will be going quickly what are the different climates present in different region on the basis of rainfall and which animals or plants whichever is given in ncert we'll see but usually we skip most of them because they say that this is endangered this is critically endangered there is different categories unfortunately these species are not prevalent at all today so according to indian categories which are there in the updated version their endangered and critically endangered species varies so my request to you is in ncert books don't try to read environment and ecology apart from remembering some definitions which are crucial and which we will be seeing mostly please rely on the current affairs materials available for environment and ecology outside not ncert ncert is only for basic understanding facts have changed so we have to be careful is that fine because we have seen certain years where a particular animal or species was seen to be endangered in one website of government in the other website of government it was shown as critically endangered and these both options were there which one will you choose upsc had seen only a particular one so we don't know what exactly is the correct answer so we have to be careful this is what my suggestion to you actually is i hope this is clear so in next two videos we will be covering biogeography the next two or last two chapters of this book later immediately we will take up sixth standard ncert book for indian monsoon basics i would request you to read it along with the indian physical geography book so before that we will be releasing that particular video so you have to see that i hope that's clear right guys so now let us take up the next two chapters